Now he's got his disciples taking the Watcher, you know? <laughs> his brood after her. Yeah, his brood. Instead of world's champions, it's like Jobby's job lot. <laughs> Jobby's <laughs> job lot. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode, episode 40 of the Golems Gamers podcast, where tonight I'm joined by Ash, Vince, James, Ben and Adam. Now with 40 episodes being a nice round number, uh, I thought it would be a uh, good episode to um, show a load of new graphics for the channel so you can see them tonight and throughout the episode um i've spent a lot of time all weekend putting a load of new graphics together so although the guys can't see them uh i do hope you enjoy them you like them because they took me a long time to put together um at the very top of the show here though uh i did just want to give a quick shout out to harry parkhill from the entmoot podcast entmoot channel whatever you want to call it because he very graciously sent me um these models to do a uh, Numenor captain conversion he paid for postage he didn't ask for any money for the models so um wow a quick shout out to harry parkhill um this, this is guy. elliot's dream oh. right here getting it's fan lovely. mail pretty hard, <laughs> right? i mean oh. it wasn't it wasn't you know in any sort of yeah you know um so yeah shout out to harry just for being thank a you, genuine a spg nice guy yeah so um thank you very much Harry. um now where am i so um yes we are back doing another one of our gbhl 100 uh preview episodes for the upcoming one ring to rule the bubbles event uh which is a um 700 point event and is hosted by our good friend matt king who was recently on uh the podcast for our into the west preview uh which you may have seen it was a couple months ago um who out of us is actually going to the event though i'm not too sure on numbers everyone i think apart from you is ali yeah, going I think it's literally just everyone but you i'm Buddy? not sure ali's going we I can have a look on the shanks i didn't see if he was on the event page but yeah i guess he, so if, it's definitely me vince ben adam james sam jay yeah it's hmm. you seven so it's just whether Ali's going. At least seven. It's his brother's event. So everyone here is going bar me. So um, yes, it's called One Ring to Rule the Bubbles. So um, there are a few kind of interesting, unique things about uh, rules pack for this event. The biggest thing is that there will be at least one piece of water terrain on every board. Um, Ashley. Did you say it was in Bath? I totally did not. That's very close to home for you. That's because... Ali King is also not going. Ali King's not going. Excellent. Who's <laughs> brother's <laughs> event? He's not going. He does live a long way away now, though. <laughs> Viewers, if you haven't already seen the excellent play on words here, the event is in Bath, Bubble Bath. There's water terrain. God. Shout out to Matt for being a, a vocab genius. Chad Matt <laughs> King. Yeah. That's the vocab genius. Vocab legend. <laughs> um so yes there is going to be um on every piece of um there will be a piece of water terrain on every board um which will be at least the size of a citadel woodland base um he says in the pack but it could be as large as like a river running across the board um and all water terrain will be classed as deep water for the duration of the event of the event ashley does that happen? so probably um this will be the first time I've ever played on deep water because anytime you play in the event, usually it's classed as shallow water. So huh. you will be getting to do some excellent clutch swim tests to maybe get to objectives. Well, I was thinking or... that maybe we should run through the deep water rules because some of our listeners yeah. may not have played with deep water rules before. I think um, that would be very good. So because I don't even know what the deep water rules are. Here we go. <laughs> and the event is this weekend. <laughs> So, as soon as you enter deep water, you must take a swim test on the chart that is in the book, and you must do so at the start of each move phase where you start in the water. So, you roll a d6. Um, if you roll a 1 on the dice, uh, the model taking the test will die. If you roll a 2, 2 or 5, you move half your distance. Uh, and if you roll a 6, you move your full distance. So, it's like when you're trying to jump over a wall or something, except if you're on a 1, you die. Um, but you get plus one to this roll on the chart if you're mounted, but you get minus one if you have heavy armor, dwarf armor, or heavy dwarf armor, you're carrying a shield, uh, or if you're carrying a banner. So I assume that if you have a banner and a shield, you're minus two. 
So they are cumulative. They yeah. stack. Yeah. So, so it's really, really bad because you can just die instantly. Um, your Aragorn, or if he rolls a one, he's out of might. I guess he's got my heroes. That was a terrible example from me. Your Witch King, he's on the floor. He's out of might. Or you roll a one. That's it. He's gone. Can't spend fate. Yeah. Game over. But even just for like normal troops, like if you have heavy armor and a shield, you're minus two. And most normal troops will have heavy armor. Yeah. So you uh, enter the deep water terrain. It's 50 50 that you drown. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Oof. Um, so, yes, that is how the chart works. Um, also, any models that are knocked prone while in deep water um, have to take um, a swim test straight away with a further minus one penalty on top of all those other modifiers. Um, the other thing is that you can't shoot in deep water. Now, Matt has put in the rules pack an FAQ specifically for this event, no surprise, uh, about the Watcher, saying that the Watcher cannot shoot in deep water because you cannot shoot. In deep water justice for the watchers what do we think so, about that then like, this is actually quite funny because when matt first announced the event it was like oh my goodness this is going to be the event for watchers and everyone was thinking of you know taking a watcher this is going to be fantastic and then <laughs> the faq came out and it basically makes the watcher terrible because he can't shoot anymore <laughs> even though <laughs> he lives in deep water so um let us know in the comments below matt has voted as ruled this FAQ in line with the uh, rules book, which says you can't shoot if you're in deep water. But really, the Watcher should be able to shoot, in my opinion. But I don't know what everyone else thinks. you can climb out of the deep water and then shoot, right? Put it this way. When it's still, yeah. the only scene that we see the Watcher in, in the films, the Watcher is physically in the water... <laughs> Shooting the tentacle. <laughs> it's, the it's obviously shallow water. water. It's obvious. I mean, the watcher is literally under the water and then it submerges up. Yeah. yeah um, you don't know how deep it was. That. Yeah. That's a pretty deep water. It's just you sitting on the floor and then just comes yeah. up. I think. I'm not sure that's potentially, a Potentially, Matt thought, like, okay, if I do not rule the fact that the watcher can't shoot then he will just be so, so good <laughs> that everyone will take him. But then again, you've yeah. gone with a deep water theme. Just take it to the max. You may watcher, as well go all in. Take the Watcher meta. <laughs> yeah, why not? I don't think this makes the Watcher bad, though, in this event. But what bonuses... I, I mean, we're going to talk about the Watcher more later when we look at some of this. But um, I'm not, uh, So it moves twice its move distance. Yeah. And gets yeah. monstrous yeah. charge. And it gets monstrous charge. Does it automatically turn up or not? No. It can resubmerge. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also the other thing for uh, deep water is that cav don't get charge bonuses as well. So if you do roll the six on your test and you can charge, um, you still don't get your charge bonus anyway. Unless you take thimble. Oh, is that? Let's uh, go. Is it... Yeah, it does say all terrain. Or... Oh, does it not say difficult terrain? It I'm says bit... he ignores all terrain. He treats all difficult That's terrain it. as open terrain. Is what it... about... I, I, th Adam. I think there was an FAQ for that. I I'm don't know if it is. Works. I don't think... Uh, for deep water, I don't think it's classed as... Difficult terrain. terrain. Yes, it is. The deep water is not terrain. Deep, is pretty difficult. Deep water is not difficult terrain. It's I a separate it thing. Is, I think I read it earlier. Bit of terrain is like of Dunharrow Cav, huh? Can they get their charge bonus? Oh, that's a good one. So of the dead, baby. <laughs> oh, uh, I can't remember where I saw it, but I think I read Vince that. is furiously Ooh, scrolling through that. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so anyway, there is going to be lots of water at the event, as the name suggests. Um, the other thing is that you can bring your own terrain along to the event. It seems like the King Brothers just love other people supplying their terrain as Adam holds up his piece that he's working on. Um, so it's, it's a good uh, terrain. Uh, <laughs> situation, isn't it? You don't have enough terrain. Oh, everyone <laughs> brings terrain. We can have an extra 20 boards. We can sell an extra 40 tickets. <laughs> 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 That's fair. I mean, it's a, fair. Those kings, this. they've got some brain power. Now, I was what I was going to say though is that um, so he said in the rules pack that it must fit in a six by six by six 
box and before board edges are selected you place it anywhere six inches away from a board edge um and if both players have a piece then you roll to see who puts it down first now i think in ali's pack it specifically says that it can't be within six of a board edge and six inches of another piece of terrain yes i'm pretty sure but matt hasn't put that bit in so you could absolutely no stipulation on this so you can put them next to each other you can basically put like let's say you could then put your huge water piece right in the middle of it and now suddenly you've got a whole area of the board a huge area that is really fucked um why didn't i take blinding light oh no (laughs) i've totally found that out i looked at it i was like he hasn't put that in the rules pack you just take any any shooting army any shooting army just an enormous piece of water in the way and goes, come on then. Well, I mean, the thing is as well, like, it doesn't have to be. Does it say that it has to be a water piece of terrain? It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure it does. It did, but it said yeah, it, it does. Water, the piece of water could be a small, like, as it wants. It oh, could be yes. like a puddle. No, no, it had to include water in some respect, yeah. yeah. You could essentially just have a huge line of sight, you know, piece blocking of terrain if it fits your army better. And you know, just have like a little puddle next. You could have a great wall of Angmar you know, with a yeah. moat. Yeah, <laughs> he totally <laughs> did say. He said um, somewhere in there that like you know you can do it to try and uh, you know have an advantage or something to that respect. So you know that isn't really frowned upon by Matt. So um, yeah. Um, okay, so that is the terrain. Um, so Adam, what are you painting up? A huge pond. Pond with a little island in the middle. For a bat. <laughs> for a bat or for a thimble or for a Nazig, for a goblin merc captain with two Ooh. mercs. Maybe. Okay. Uh, so versatile. Variety. Yeah. No spoilers though. We may be looking at your list. Uh, yeah. So very beast. Um, so also the final thing to kind of talk about the event is that round three will be a modified version of whole ground. So um, it's the same VPs where it's one and two vps for enemy leader wound and kill and one and three for break unbroken but it's the vps for the middle that have changed so um the way matt has worded it is that at the end of any turn um the player with more models in range of the objective he said the objective but i assume he means the middle of the board um will score a point uh both players keep a tally of the points till the end of the game um, and if you have more of these points, you get three VPs. If you have twice as many, you get five. And if you have three times as many, you get seven. So the scale uh, works the same as it does in normal whole ground, but it's like you keep a track each turn. I think it's kind of like in 40K, they have similar yeah. scoring for some of their missions and things where it's like a turn-by-turn basis. Um, that is totally a good idea. I for, really do like, like it. Yeah, It's just a, it's just a completely new um, version of the scenario. Like it makes bats... And really fast cav, just way better because you just stick one in the middle and get two points before anyone else can go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the keen listeners will remember that uh, the Golems game has had an exclusive reveal of the way he was going to score this in the into the West podcast. He said he was going to do it. He said he was going to do. He didn't say how he was going to do it, but he said that the scoring would be. Each round, you know, so it's like a different because there's no scenario. Oh, like yeah, I think I do. I do remember him talking about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. I like it. Yeah, I do like it. But yeah, in a particular matchup, if you've got a bat, say like Adam, and your opponent doesn't have a very fast army, say if he's playing Sam, you could just you had bat to for, the middle. For example, a Crabane that would give you lots of maneuverability. So <laughs> much mobility. <laughs> and the thing is, like. In, yeah, let's say your opponent comes on the opposite board edge. You can sit six inches on your side of the objective. So really, you can kind of put another, what, 12 inches from when they can get within six inches on their side to start contesting the middle. So you've got essentially another two turns of movement, really, to, you know, get your bat or whatever out of dodge. So oh yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Any other thoughts on the scenario from anyone? No. Okay. We will move on then to looking at some stats for the event. So first of all, we have the faction breakdown. Um this graphics. 100. Now uh oh, these got... graphics are beautiful. <laughs> I was just gonna say that totally isn't how it's gonna look. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what these guys are seeing is totally uh, way worse than what you as the viewer are seeing. So starting things off with the uh, top amount of appearances with um, six appearances, we have Mordor uh, and Rivendell with six appearances. Then we have Serpent Horde with five. Uh, with four appearances, we have Lothlorien and Moria. With three, we have uh, Denizens of Mirkwood, uh, Kazadoom making a resurgence, uh, Numenor and Return of the King, and then a number of other factions following on. So, initial thoughts on this one? Mordor's back, baby. A lot of freaking Rivendell. Lots of allies with it. Lots of allies. Yeah. Not only Numenor, there's a couple lots in there. Why has nobody taken the Grand Army of the South and decided to just walk over people's deep water. Yeah. Because monarchs are so massive that they just walk over deep water with no penalties. <laughs> so that could have been a fun shout, but um, clearly nobody thought of that. Sad. Clearly not. Mm. I'm no, interested there might have been to more see that. Loss. Yeah, there's not many Isengard. I actually think Isengard would be amazing at this because... Yeah, got- I do. Crabane and really good shooting. Yeah, you're bang on that, Adam. And Probably the two ground, people that have taken. With whole ground, if you take Lurts, you're guaranteed to get two war bands together. Yeah. Probably the two um, people that have taken Isengard are Jay and Jake Rawson. So <laughs> they know... two people who know what they're doing take Isengard. Two Isengard. people who know what they're doing. Um... <laughs> oh no, I don't think Jake's actually going to this event. I'm not sure he, he is. On long janks. So maybe just Jay. But, yeah, Adam, you've hit the nail on the head there. If you just put your deep water in front of your crossbows and potentially ballistas, the person you're going to play is going to be really sad. We've also seen the terrain, haven't we, from Matt? And there's and it's a lot of flat, so there's not going to be much to break up the shooting as well. Mm. Lots of line of sight. Yeah. Do yeah. we think the Rivendells, all six of them contain a Kirdan for that sort of outshooting purpose? Yes. Now there is also or, a fair... or Galadriel, yeah, or if it's allied right. with a Lothlorien or Galadriel, yeah, yeah. There's also a fair guess to what a fair few of the Mordor lists contain. So a shadow them. beast, not uh, you know giving away anything for the next slide. <laughs> uh, there are there is a lot of blinding light at this event, so people are clearly scared of being watched. Jobby has terrified the <laughs> community. <laughs> How many? Heroics. To be fair, four Moriers. If that's not a hundred percent watchers, I'm gonna be disappointing. Yeah. And there are some watchers going to shout out to anyone who's taken a watcher at this event, you get a high five. I have seen every list, so there are some. Is Jobby bringing a uh, watcher? Now Matt did leave out the names. I don't think so. Disclosing so he spent all year last year practicing (laughs) with his watcher. I think he's on a far harad hype at the moment. Yeah. (laughs) Now he's got his disciples taking the watcher, you know? His brood after her. Yeah, his brood. <laughs> Instead of world's champions, it's like Jobby's job lot. <laughs> Jobby's job lot. <laughs> You'd be Shout out to Jobby for being the watcher goat. <laughs> Sam is I'm so angry right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a couple of Saurons as there um, as well, actually. Go back and watch the Monster Mash. Watch that Monster tier list. Sauron is <laughs> the tier list. Oh. Ash, that is the promotion <laughs> I love from you, mate. Come on. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Since, Not I've many my, Empress. since I've had my internal promotion, I'm I'm hyped. Oh yeah, I didn't really announce on the podcast. Ashley Walger has been promoted to the podcast exec. Give a round for Ashley. Yes. Come on, folks. Thank yeah. you, Elliot. Yes. Oh, yeah. What were you, and I well. quote uh, <laughs> his life work. There, there have been many managers' meetings in the in the recent weeks. Uh, there, what Ashley. this means for the viewers is that me and Elliot have a phone call every week. Discussing ideas. Scheduled in. So if you have any ideas, Friday night because I've got nothing else to. Do. Put them in the comments below, and me and Elliot will discuss them. You know, Ashley will review them and then bring them to me. You know because that's his role. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ben, you were saying a lack of dragon emperors. There's only one, and I I know it's had the hit, mm. but it's still been sort of popular. Yeah, it's whether people seven hundred points. Is it that just maybe the water isn't the event for it? But it's fast because it's got the drum and you can put a captain of it from March so you can move 20 inches. Um, And it likes holding jokes as well. So you can get around the water really, really quickly. Maybe 
they're scared of being watched. I mean, I I've had my emperor watched by Jobby, and it was not fun. <laughs> One that game, though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he did slurp up my emperor. But um, he slurped up my emperor. Did you just say? Oh, <laughs> he slurped up as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe people are trying to still wait and see what the the best points for it is. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, Emperor is still really good. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just it's like just instead of like fifty, yeah. sixty points for free, it's now like thirty, forty points. Yeah. But this does look quite different compared to Preston, though, because in they're both seven hundred points. Yeah, so but there's a lot more dwarves at Preston. There was a hell of a lot of dwarves at Preston. I don't know. Obviously, yeah, everyone's water. terrified of drowning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, every dwarf armor and a shield gives you yeah. minus three. So ends not though, and having yeah. to get to the middle and hold ground. <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, what you're painting at the moment, Ben? Yeah, I'm painting my right. iron. Don't give, don't give too much away. Oh, I don't give too much. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I bet you do. That. I bet you do. Um, so, any more comments about this before we move on? There's an assault on Helm's Deep. Love to see. I was it. just yeah, I was just looking at that and I thought, oh no. That- a guy could do well. <laughs> that could go nicely for Ash him. Went, oh. went, I'm looking at. I'm, I'm thinking it's actually quite different to all the meta we've had this year. So, for example, there's Lake Town is really low. It's like, always much slower at high points, though. Yeah, no, but survivors can ally in really well with five armies. So there's only one of them, and then yeah. there's only one row hand. I guess it's that pure Rohan that's... That, that's a Rohan Loth list. Okay. And then there's only two Minas Tiriths. Minas Tiriths pretty good at 700. Yeah, it's... There's only one well host of Dragon Emperor. There's only one Azog's Legion, only one Azog's Hunters. Also, there's zero is... Erebor Reclaimed. We usually see at least some kind of Erebor Reclaimed. Yeah, that is very rare. It's usually pretty popular. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's a really good spread. Yeah. But yeah, there's a hell of a lot of Mordor, Rivendell, and Serpent Horde. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's shaken up the meta a bit. We haven't had that in a while, like at least three or four months. Yeah, and there's think, other things on the top end. Yeah, I was going to say Matt has done well creating a a unique event. Like yeah. he's done the way he has written his rule pack is unlike anything else that we've seen in the league. So. That's why it's going to create a different meta. Just nice to have a different take on yeah. an event. Yeah. Well, we play. Indeed. Right. Well, if that is everything for the faction breakdown, we will move on to the leader breakdown. So um, at the top spot with four appearances, we have the Shadow Lord, Suladan, and the Witch King tied for first place. And with three appearances, we have Aragorn, that is Strider, uh, and Glorfindel. Uh, then with two appearances, we have heroes like Balin, Durbas, Durin, Galadriel. I'm going to read off the rest of these. Sildor, Musgur, Sauron, and Theoden. Uh, so, any takeaways from this one? Witch King Sully reigns supreme, baby. <laughs> so, know, not, sure, not sure that really works, because obviously there's four of those leaders are Suladan and not the Witch King, so... Yeah. No, that's a good point, actually. So, <laughs> Half of the Lord and Shadow Lord is not, is not yeah, exactly. the Shadow Lord. The Shadow Lord, yeah. yeah. So four Shadow. The leader would have to be Suladan in those lists. Yeah, which is why you got the Suladans. Yeah. So there were what There's... six Rivendell lists, which are There's only six Mordor lists. And away. now there's eight Mordor leaders. Ah. Ah. Oh, which, which king can be? Hang on, mate. <laughs> It's weak, actually, on the podcast. Now, Matt did actually split up the Witch King into Angmar and Mordor, but I took that out. Uh, but viewers, let us know if you would like it to be split up. For the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we have the capabilities, you know, to do that around here. Everyone just comment yes, just to give Elliot one more stat to put in. Oh. No! Uh, so, any any other takeaways from this one? Um, Aragorn Strider is that the one that's in the Legion? 
Yeah, Army of the Dead Legion. Yeah. Potentially, Adam. His Army of the Dead run across water like nobody's business. They do. Apart from Aragorn. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, though, no, he doesn't have a shield. He only has regular armor, and he's got a free might point, which, which means he's only minus he's not one. drowning. So he has he no drown. he has no minus modifiers then because it's only heavy. No, armor. I'm sure he does have an armor. No, no, no. It's for um heavy armor or normal dwarf armor. Oh, so heavy armor, so minus heavy armor, one. normal heavy dwarf, dwarf armor, dwarf armor and minus heavy two. Dwarf. Yes, regular armor. Aragorn, he's flying across that wall. So it's only minus one for every type of armor. Oh no, it must be minus two for heavy dwarf armor. It's not. No, Me it's and Sam talked about this the other day. It, it's not. Yeah, I don't so, know why oh, it's not, but it should just say dwarf armor. Any any type of dwarf armor. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Um. Yeah. So other kind of things of note. I mean, there's a couple AOLs chucking around. I'm not sure what they're gonna do with water. I don't know. Have they got? Really good at shooting. Stand like behind it. it and shoot. Yeah. They yeah. got bats and spiders for movement to go around. Yeah, to get the middle but, of whole ground. I guess that's pretty good. Because we don't. The only scenario that we know is whole ground round three, right? So. Yeah. I mean, uh, shooting. Yeah. Are they all pulls as, or they random seventeen? Um, that is a good question. I can find out. Because three, my but... thinking is the shooting armies. If the scenarios are rolled correctly, and you know it's assassination to the death and you can just sit at the back of the board with your water terrain in front of you we're going to see yeah. AOL could definitely be winning this event yeah AOL because I mean the Assault on Helm's Deep will struggle at the hold ground uh, yes. so, so I think it is just rolled randomly the scenario for each round will be randomly selected from all scenarios that have not already been yeah. selected no scenarios nice so we could twice. see to the death lords <laughs> Contest yeah. all going on. I think contest would be a good one. Yeah, we could also have like five maelstrom stars or whatever. Like, obviously, there's not that many, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> have all ground guaranteed, and then yeah. um, yeah, and whatever the other one is. Come on, the contest would be hilarious. Contest would be hilarious if there's a water feature right in the middle and both leaders <laughs> drown. <laughs> both, yeah. instantly drown. Well, you could put be... it on. Yeah, oh. you know, at the start of the game, just put it around the middle. Yeah. Yeah, you both deploy your leaders, they both drown. You have to spend might. Oh no. <laughs> now your heroes have yeah. might left. Unless yeah, that's brave that a couple people are taking armor. Galadriel. Yeah. Really, it could just be contest. Yeah. Same with Durberg, right? Nah, he's alright. Durberg's mm. He's got strike defense resolve. He's Chad. Let's hope. Let's hope for some let's hope for a really good selection of scenarios like Storm the camp. Heirlooms. Heirlooms. <laughs> Ward features everywhere. It'll take even longer to get a contest. What? This could be the best event ever. If you play, um, <laughs> we, we draw Storm the Camp, and then the person who each team with water features just puts a humongous water feature in front of the, the camp. <laughs> yeah. This then means it takes not four turns to get out from the camp, but like eight turns, and half your army dies as you're trying to swim yeah. to you your get... port. You get chosen a camp that is just pure water, and your army drowns as you deploy it. <laughs> yeah, roll <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Both players to just agree to run through the water and just see who comes up. Have any of you uh, played on a map like where map. the actual <laughs> the actual table map is water? So, like as a beachhead, yeah, I have with you. So, <laughs> like uh, oh, yeah, that's exactly the one I'm talking about in Bournemouth, where like yeah. the first foot. Of the table, like yeah, a third of it was okay. just the ocean, <laughs> and then you walk onto the beach. I wonder. And we played Melsham on it as well. We did, yeah, but obviously we played it as shallow. I think, right? To stop yeah, we did instantly death. But That's why if, Cave Drake didn't instantly die? But if Matt has a couple of maps like that, where you know there's just like a bit of ocean, and you play yeah. Melsham, <laughs> you could see. And um, I saw probably one of the most cursed boards I've ever seen at a tournament. It was at the the 90 that we went to after Bert's wedding. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, it was exactly that same type of thing. But it was but, the ocean. But that one had like... terrain on that side of the board. The one me and Ash played on had nothing. But the ocean was like <laughs> half of the board. There was yeah, a yeah. bridge. 
Remember, there was like a thin little bridge, probably about. Yeah, it, was like a, it was like a six inch bridge that you yeah, could deploy like to. That was it. Three or four models or something that would run from one board end <laughs> like down to the halfway line. So if you had Maelstrom and you rolled on that side, you would have yeah, to. Yeah, I think some poor game. person had to play like Seize the Prize in that. Yeah, oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> uh, but like, it wasn't just a little bit of ocean at the start. It was like up to the no, half. It was literally the like about half the board. It was half the board. <laughs> we need more the of thing those. Is... All of these viewers, do you like water features? Yes or no? <laughs> All of these uh, really board side dependent scenarios, like seize the prize, are going to be so awful if they're drawn because it's just going to be whoever wins the board roll off picks the one that doesn't have a horrendous water feature in the way. Quick question, Elliot: Do you deploy the water before you choose board sides? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that that is good, but it still says the same thing of you can win board edge and then just yeah. screw your opponent by yeah. picking the. Yeah, so like you go for the domination strategy of five on one side and just hope you win the roll off. Yeah, it does really make it different though, where you can put it right next to other terrain. You could really fuck a whole half of the board or something and force them to come a particular way. You know, that's so the thing. I am interested. Have a piece of terrain and your opponent doesn't. You know. Because the way Ali's event works is the boards are way sparser with terrain because yeah, two people are bringing pieces of terrain. So I'm thinking it'll be the same situation with Matt's event. Didn't you have but, to bring for Ali's? Oh no, you got like a tournament. No, point. you got a TP yeah. for it. Yes. So effectively, you really, did have to bring one. Yes. Yeah. For this, you don't have to. So he should have the boards in, you know, a normal fashion. Um, but then you're adding two huge pieces of terrain onto the board. Uh, which makes, it's going to make it really clutch. Hasn't said that people have to bring terrain, or he hasn't heavily hinted that you should bring terrain, as Ali did by offering a TP for it, where he would know that it's just additional. 100 w would bring it. But as Matt has said, it's optional. If you have an army that you know doesn't want want a water feature or something added onto the board, you know you might just not bring one. So, yeah, you can always just take like a little barrel or something though. Yeah. But it's just, yeah, if he doesn't put enough on there expecting water and then half of the event doesn't bring it, then, you know. But it's going to be interesting. Yeah. We'll have to, uh, viewers, keep an eye on the uh, GPHL page on Facebook to have a look at some of this terrain, see if we're really over discussing this point or not. Um, and if you're on Instagram, go and check out the Golems Games Instagram page. Yeah. I was just about to say, uh, there's a missed opportunity there, and I totally didn't plug our own Instagram at the start of the podcast. Go and check it out. We're almost at 100 followers. Let's go. Oh. Right, uh, move on? Okay, moving on. We are going to get into some lists. So we are going to start by discussing some of the lists uh, that other people are taking to the event before having um, a look at some of our own. So starting off, we have a Mordor and Moria alliance, which is um, not led by the Shadow Lord, it is led by Derbers uh, from Moria, who is leading 13 goblins with spear and a bat swarm. And then he also has the Watcher. I thought we would kick it off with a Watcher list as... This event is obviously all about water. Then from Mordor, he is allied in the Shadow Lord of the Force, leading one Orc Tracker, one Wild Rider with Shield and Throwing Spear, and 13 Black Nuns. And then he has an Orc Cat put for March with five Orc Trackers. So it's 38 models. He's got the Shadow Lord in there, Black Numb front line with the Harbinger, and a Watcher with a bat for a little kill box. What do we think? Is this Jobby's list? I don't know. I don't know the name. They're done with maybe a couple prowlers. I think he's. Well, it's it's a pretty standard watcher shadow lord combination. Yeah. Like, if anyone's running it competitively, this is kind of what you're taking. I think you're you're right, James. This needs a prowler to make it like that next step, because yeah. although the watchers strength six, you're going to automatically win the fight because you've got the bat and the watchers dice and derbers. Your strongest strike is strength four. So if you come up against something like I don't know, a thrall, the strongest strike there, the strongest is strength six. Sorry, sorry, I did I mentioned that at the start. That's my fault. But I mean, the strongest yeah. strike is strength six outside so, of the watcher. Yes, which means you don't have any. Even if you're rolling with the watcher and trap twelve with a bat four, 
even if you're on like 26 dice, that still doesn't kill Thrain outright because you need six to wound and he's got fate in the Arkenstone and stuff. Whereas yeah, if you get the I'm not right. sure. I think you meant Thrall. Sorry, yeah. Thrall. <laughs> what what I mean is the prowler the prowler secures the kill on yeah. the trap. Without the prowler, without the prowler, you will get some circumstances where you just don't instantly kill the thing, and then that's annoying. Yeah, but then at the same time, there might be a particular list that would have the prowler and not the watcher, and then you're thinking, oh, but we need you know another prowler in there. Like you do still have the watcher rolling strength six dice, which is no the prowler. No, the Prowler is needed in this list because of the Watcher combo in the Death Triangle. That's the point of it. Yeah, yeah. Just makes I'm... it more consistent. Yes. Yeah. So, Lila, I'm not saying that it's not good to have the Prowler there, but you do still have the Watcher rolling in the Strength 6 dice. Yeah, but say something like your Emperor, you're not really killing that with just a Watcher and a Bat. No. No, when Jobby killed mine, I think he had... Maybe a he prowler. had others in, in, in there as well, because... Um... Nah, Jobby always takes Prowlers. Obviously, it's totally worth it. Maybe he had a prowler there. Uh, I can't remember actually, but um, it would have been nice to have a prowler. But like, you're still yeah. looking pretty good. Obviously, Thror is the extreme end, right? But uh, you know, well, no. Even with if we take your Dragon Emperor for example, right? The Watcher gets twelve yeah. dice, needs fives, so he's doing four wounds. But you've got the three Fate and potentially three Might, or whatever. So then you need to fish for sixes with Durbers, a Batswoman, and maybe two Goblins, which is not consistent when you when you. When the so watcher doesn't take into account that he passes all three fate as well, you know. But yeah, with the yeah, three might. He's got three. What I mean is, I when you pull, when you pull the model in, you need to kill it, like so yeah. that you can churn through the watcher death combo. You just having that prowler. I mean, this is, oh, this it, is would, a, it would it would it would make it ten percent more consistent. I agree. Yeah, that's yeah. This this is still really strong. Just get a prowler in there, and then that you know. Be. But like, where does he really <laughs> drop points from? How many points more is a prowler compared to like a goblin? Uh, prowler's seven points. Yeah, so I guess you drop the shield or the throwing spear or something on the wag, and yeah. But he's he's gone really budget with the six trackers. Um, yeah, the, uh, yeah the, no the... spears on the goblins as well. No shields. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry, yes. Seven hundred points is like really hitting the limit. This is probably the lowest points you can run this list. Dobby right? took it at 800 at the finale when I played him. So you got an yeah. extra points to turn, you know, to add uh, the shields onto the goblins and add in prowlers and all that sort of shit, you know. But he's had to go really bargain basement and still get 38 models is, you know, pretty good. I don't know why. Yeah, a singular bat them. swarm as well. If you're facing against the hero that's got terror, could just, uh, I suppose you do technically, that's a bit stupid, but. Like if he, if you're needing him to do more than just sit in the triangle, right? Yeah. It's always nice to have two bat swarms. Or I know some people do run it with um, what's his name, Fury for beasts. I forgot his name. Yeah. Druzag. That's right. Druzag. No, Druzag. Druzag. Yeah, yeah. The other thing you can do is if the if you're pulled in, you can just with a compel, you can just compel the bat swarm away at that triangle, which yeah. again is why two bat swarms. I mean, the, I respect the person who's taking this because they've gone you're the, playing against a compel, though. But, yeah. They've gone the watch. They've gone the watch route. It's a bubbles water event. I just think yeah. seven hundred points. Now looking at the list, maybe seven hundred points is just slightly yeah, some weaknesses. Yeah, this this is budgeted. an extremely lean list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eight hundred. Yeah. Port captain naked. You've got all of the Moria goblins have only got one piece of war gear. You've got six trackers to up the numbers. You've only got... Is it only one bat swarm? Yeah. It's very, very lean. Do you maybe drop, like, a couple um, numbs and then mm. sort of convert them into yeah. something Do you ever really need yeah. 13 numbs? 13 is a lot. Like, can you live with 11 and then you get some shields on those goblins to put them up to D5? I think that's a big difference. Yeah, I think 11 D5. would be... 11 is probably... Where you want to be, because you again, get away the, with point, that. the point in this list is you've got the watcher, so you need to use it to its maximum effect. Like you've invested over a quarter of your armor with the watcher, so you don't necessarily need like thirteen black numenorians in the shield wall. Um, yeah, that is uh, yes yeah, a lot. So like, could you get away with ten or eleven, probably, and then use those points elsewhere? I'm not sure why he's put a random orc tracker with the shadow wall band. Seems like that would make sense to put with the other five trackers. 
no, it's good to split your <laughs> shooting up. Just mm-hmm. why not? Yeah. It's just one tracker. He's got one Max Warband, and they all, I guarantee that. Oh, he must want that. He's, okay, he's got that as a single drop, hasn't he? That. Yeah. Captain five drops. Yeah, he wants the Max one with the Shadow Lord. Yeah. yeah. No banner either. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Either. No banner. Yeah. No banner. So he's had to cut some corners, but he's got to 38 models, which is pretty good. But I think, you know, considering you've got six trackers and 13 D4 goblins, you know, 38 maybe isn't that high. So no. he's paid for a lot of tech. So that watch has got to do a lot of work. Yeah. So... The tech is here. Um, he I does just a think... lot of blinding lights. So yeah. Peak. Just, yeah, just looking at just looking at any improvements you can make to this list. The, um, just... so the, no, go the ahead, army. Ben. I was just going to waffle. The the <laughs> army doesn't last long enough. I don't think uh, for the watcher to do its work mm-hmm. because it's going to lean very heavily on the black Numenorians, uh mm-hmm. with the terror and then those charges because obviously the thirteen goblins are going to be behind the black numbs. And as soon as you go through the black numbs, because to beat the watcher, you don't put your heroes in because then they get plucked out. Um, so if your troops can grind through that the other shield wall quick enough um yeah. that then you are into the watcher and then you can can then deal with it and he's only got six bows so if he's going to another blinding light list yeah. you will then have to go to that shooting army because there's only the six bows yeah and he's got a lot of um, yeah obviously he'll have it in the way in the front of the numbs but then <clears throat> you know he's got a but very... if you kill the numbs then you might as well just shoot the numbs, that, I guess just 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 numbs. yeah i think the overall conclusion from all of us is that 700 points is just slightly too few. Like 750 is probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great. Got a lot more points. It's just yeah. like, maybe do you take out take out the captain? He needs March. Then you've got no space. No, no, you need the March, I think he yeah. needs the March because yeah, for those times that ben, ben just explained when he gets out shot, he needs to move up the board. Yeah. So I actually, I like this list. I just think if it had an extra 30 or 40 points, it would make a huge difference. I think so yeah, it's all that second war band. I think also as well, um, one thing to be said about the Black Numb sort of wall is that in which King Sully, it's so good because it's got the terror, the fight for, but it's also got the strength for as well, um, which obviously this list yes. doesn't have. So if it plays against the D6, that is kind of a fairly big issue. Obviously, this list has the Watcher to do a fair amount of lifting, but if the Watcher doesn't roll that well on its, um, you know, the amount of shots that it gets, you know, a couple ones and twos, then your line might not be killing anything either. So Yeah, something else that we always say as well, warbands should be able to function independently, and this does not uh, fill that uh, at all. Fair point. But I mean, a fair amount of kind of alliance armies can fall into that sometimes if you're having like a front to back. They can, but knowing you're playing a Maelstrom scenario and then taking all independent warbands, questionable. Yeah. 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 This is a shame that Sam's not here because he has written many watcher lists and would maybe know how he would run it at he should have got he does on. say though 700 is always too low we should have got jobby on yeah. so this was his perfect <laughs> the perfect <laughs> one to summon him in the job man on him through the water feature okay right. uh, next list but this is um, yes let's good. move on to another sort of similar list but it's subbing out the watcher for a spider queen so uh, this one is led by the Shadow Lord, I believe, who is taking eight Orc Trackers, one ra- Warg Rider with Throwing Sphere. Um, then he has a second Warband led by a Ring Wraith, who is 271. Ashley, do you like the Might Will and Fate there on the look? At, it's looking pretty nice, that's right? Very t- that's very tasty there. I like very that tall. a lot. Yeah, uh, who is leading six Moranans with Shield Spear and six Back Numbs. Then he has Gorbag, Ash's favourite, with Shield, leading one Orc Warrior with Banner and Shield, six Moranans with Shield Spear and five Black Numbs. And then he has the Spider Queen with another Bat Swarm. Uh, this is also 38 models. Um, it's got more Might, keeps the March with the Budget Wraith. He's got Double Caster as well. But he's traded out the Watcher for Spider Queen. Any thoughts on this one? It's good. <laughs> it's good. Tell us, ben. It's, it's Tell a well balanced list. It can do. It's got lots of tools to do what it what the person running it will want to do. Uh, he's got a fast component. Component. Um, he's got a very good shield wall in there. 
Um, he's got the double caster, so he can deal with the hero hero threats. Um, he can move fast. He's got protection against um, shooting. It's a good solid list, I'd say. Mm. Also, to touch touch more on that, Ben, those broodlings and backstorms yeah. are getting into the middle first for that hold ground. Yeah. Um, you are losing points instantly with the spider Wait, hold queen on, hold on. when you come on in maelstrom with the spider queen can you get some th- you can get the broodlings immediately in range yeah, instantly there yeah yeah, yeah. instantly wow, in range so crazy. instantly on turn one you're getting points. that's crazy that's yeah. and, you're gonna and if you've got like, if you've got destroy the supplies or stomp anything you need to get across the board quickly on it's it's still even better because they'll un- they'll only drown on the one because they haven't got any of the heavy armor, any of the shields. Oh, so yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. swim really yeah. quickly as well. Um uh, even moving half distance, dice. they're moving five, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, but that's still quickly enough. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah no, exactly. They could be across that water feature if unless it's a six inch or yeah. massive well, lake. Almost, they could be across yeah. it in that first turn yeah. and yeah. then bang off they go. Yeah. Um but Spider if they're um, automatically in water. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you can get sort of, yeah, turn one to the middle. I mean, if you're playing against even just a regular six inch moving army with March, you're going to have what, two free turns before. So that's two free points on the board before you know, anything's happened yet. Really, really strong. Um, I really like this. The double caster as well to obviously up your compel opportunities when they arise. Yeah, get- double compel is absolutely fantastic. It's got 11 black numbs. So, like, for example, we look at this list and think it's a really strong battle line, and it's got 11 black numbs, as opposed to the last list had 13, so I think... But, but it's defense. It's a defence 6 army rather than a defence exactly. 4 army with 10 they- defence 6 armies, defence 6 models. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that, that's a good point. Um, and the difference is, is that he has, he's fleshed out, he's done what we were talking about that other list doing, where he's upgraded everything to be Moranans and he's got the strength four and more D6 and everything, but he's got those points available because the Spider Queen is, what, 85 points cheaper than the Watcher. So that's ultimately where yeah. it comes from. So, you know. I think this is a perfect list um, for the scenario, keeping the burning light, uh, having the tools to cross the water when necessary, specking out instantly winning or instantly having a massive advantage in the one scenario that we know you're going to play uh yeah i guess the only thing i can think about in this one is not having if you don't use the spider queen well enough potentially lacking a little bit of killing this looks like a very well i was thinking this looks like a very well put together list i imagine the person using this is probably a pretty good player i would have to guess so yeah, should be able to get some good return out of it. But um... yeah, the Spider Queen is really uh, difficult to get perfect use out of her and not get her killed. You could, uh, what I mean to say is you can get her killed quite easily if you make a mistake. So yeah. it's using the Spider Queen well enough. Um, yeah, to get value, to get that massive value out of out of her. But no, I, I'd be scared to play this definitely. Yeah. It's okay. like a Jakob style list. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, it's really well put together. So, okay. On that note, we will move on to, we are going to keep the trend going here because I thought we have just done a list about the Watcher. We've just done a list about the Spider Queen. So why don't we see a list with both of them? Oh, so no. this what? is led by Derbers, who's leading three Goblins with Shield, three with Spear, two with Bow, and one Prowler. And there is also a Bat Swarm there, because I didn't hit space. Um, then he has a second Warband led by Ashrak, who is leading four Goblins with Shield, three with Spear, one with Bow, um, one regular Goblin with no war gear, one Prowler, and a Bat Swarm, where I didn't hit space again. Then we have a uh, Goblin Captain leading four Goblins with Shield, four with Spear, and two with Bow. And then he's allied in the Spider Queen, and he also has the Watch. Sorry, so it's thirty-seven models, ten might, five bows. Obviously, he's got the Watcher as well, and Ashrak. Which so he's kept the March with the Captain because they're like thirty-five points, which is crazy. Um, but he's got Ashrak as well to potentially send the Spider Queen Shroud of Shadows style through the line, and potentially a Watcher even. <laughs> Yeah, very vulnerable to shooting though. I mean, again, yeah. as you said about the other one, there's no shields on those spears and stuff. It's got no Shadow Lord like the other one did. Yeah. 
I think we finally found a list that mine might outshoot. <laughs> <laughs> Yours got good shooting. What are you on about? <laughs> Against no, it doesn't really. We'll get to it later. I know. Yeah, it's fake shooting. It's fake shooting. Fake yeah. shooting. Yeah. But um, you know, obviously we've been talking about the Watcher and the Spider Queen and their merits, but now you get both of them. I would maybe go back to our first point that we said about this event, which is that shooting lists are going to be really strong because you can impede the movement of your opponent's army. This list, if it faces shooting and faces some water terrain, isn't crossing it very quickly at all. Uh -huh. Maybe the trouble is the, the Watcher for 200 points is really good when it's supported properly but on its own it's just a fight six monster that like for example you wouldn't put the you couldn't put the watcher just in front of somebody's army because it would die instantly so uh, you don't need to put the watcher in front of the army you have ashrak to shroud of shadows the watcher behind the army can you shroud of shadows ashrak uh, no you can only do up spiders no Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Gotta make some iron axes. Does it say in Ashrak's rule that Shroud of Shadows only works for him on spiders? Yeah, only on spiders. I haven't read it. I like I do like the combo. Uh, I like the Shadow combo Shadows between Spider Queen though. Shadow Spider Spiders Queen. the Spider Queen, but I think it's pretty replace hard. Replace the Watcher, give yourself four goblin shatter shamans. And then we're talking. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Uh, there's no bat swarm in the Spider Queen's warband. That's war literally as well. what I was about to say. So he's had. Like, to... Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, well, because he's got up to 37 models without, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, no, no, but he still paid for two bat swarms. Just move one into the Spider Queen's warband. Yeah. It just seems better. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd be much more scared of really? the last know. list. Do you get up to 40 models and drop a bat swarm? No, you keep no, both of them. Two. Why would you drop one? Yeah, you can get the shields and all those goblins. Maybe so. Yeah, but you've got so much more maneuverability with those two bats. Yeah, yeah. Like one can stay with the spider no, queen, one can stay with the watcher, mm. or one can stay with both, and the other can fly off and do stuff. No, I guess it's can you get away with only having one, but then you make everything else in your army, you know, better by a fair amount. I don't. Yeah. Know. Also, Argument. having five. Goblins with bow when you've only got 37 models. It's quite a big commitment. Yeah, you've got yeah, a lot of D4. Just, yeah, bows. No shields, no spear. And then you've also got the one naked goblin as well. So you've got yeah. six of those useless boys. Yeah. I just uh... thought it was interesting. It's, it's a spicy one. I mean, if you see the Watcher and the Spider Queen, you're probably going to be like, oh, this could be interesting. Depending it's, on the it's, it's definitely fun. Um, I'm not sure how competitively it will perform, but it's, yeah. it'll be the person using it will have a great time. It's quite a fun list. I do like it. That's why I put it in. So okay, nice. it's toolboxy. It's got like lots of tricks. I mean, yeah, the it is, but it is also fight two. It is very tricky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> D five max. Yeah, exactly. So you gained some tricks, but you've lost some. Uh, okay, we will move on to our next list, which is a Return of the King Legendary Legion list. Let's so just let Vince read this out. Like, it, he is the, the ghost man. Vince? He does love ghosties. No, no, I like pure ghosts. This is this is garbage. Oh, is it? <laughs> too, many, too many heroes. <laughs> he gets your models. <laughs> he gets that, that 40 model ghost count. They were talking. <laughs> they were talking at 450. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Return of the King uh, list is led by Aragorn Strider with Anduil. Uh, he is leading three Warriors of the Dead with Shield, four with Shield Spear. Then he has Legolas uh, with Armor, leading three with Shield, three with Shield Spear, and one Rider of the Dead. And then the King of the Dead in the third Warband, leading three with Shield and four with Shield Spear. So it's 24 models for the Ghosts. Seven Might, obviously with the three. Um, Leggy with the two up as well so there was a few of these lists and i thought this was probably the best one it had the highest model count while keeping it the highest dead in there this is the highest so because some of them had some more riders of the dead one of them had a herald in there as well so it had 
four heroes. So that was only like, I think maybe 19 models. I might be wrong, but this was the highest model count. You get Aragorn, King of the Dead, Leggy, which is the order of the heroes, I think, that you want. Um, and you keep a cab in there as well. Everything's got a shield. So like 24 is also a nice even number for your break point. So I think this was probably the best. But so what exactly do the ghosts get for the water? I don't know. I didn't. They just get to move freely over it. So they just walk completely free. Okay. But obviously yeah. Aragorn and Leggy won't. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, what do we think with the water and everything? It's fun. It's fun to just traverse over the the water freely. Potentially if you're going for the ghost gig, as Vince said, you just spam all ghosts to run across the water. This feels a lot like the last list. It's like it's it's like cool for the event, but I don't know if it's the most competitively focused list. Yeah, 24 models is too few. I mean, they are all, they're all ghosts, so yeah, they're high defense, and you've got three very good heroes. Um, so I've tried to pick lists that sort of highlight the uniqueness of the event. Yeah. So are we saying that we don't think there are many competitive lists that you could write that really do take yeah. advantage of the water? I think there probably are, just maybe not the ones that are so water-focused. Yes, the ones How that take advantage they... of the water are exactly what we mentioned earlier, which is lots of shooting, and then you just put a water terrain in front of your yeah. army so that it's more difficult to get around that shoot. Right. The waters, the water. I don't know if there's anything that. Yeah, like you use the, the water, water in in yeah. such a you know direct way. Um, yeah. that you could leverage around it. Yes. Yeah. So, any other thoughts from anyone? Again, I mean, this could still do fairly well. I mean, if you're seeing a lot of terror and stuff, it's great against that. It's got strong terror itself. It's got big killing heroes. Like, yeah. Also as well, I think one thing worth noting is that obviously, yeah, you could just get a board that has one of those six by four Hitzel Woodland bases, you know, size of deep water. But you could also get a board that has like four of them. Yeah, and you bring your own as well, and suddenly you've got a board with a lot of it covered in deep water. If you yeah, have... I suppose yeah, if you're facing against like the King of Dead Aragorn and a bunch of ghosts in a line, like that's actually quite hard to take out because it is D eight. Yeah, right. and there's the water as well, so you know you've got to take tests. So you know get yeah. To... So normally like you're outflanking to kill this army, whereas it's yeah. much harder to do it's outflanking you potentially depending on where. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. The only thing is the synergy between Aragorn, Legolas, and then the ghosts. They just are playing yeah. catch-up with the ghosts. Leggy's sort of fine, because, I mean, I think one thing about this list is that you need to use Leggy's might sometimes for the actual troops, so you kind of maybe need to have him sort of close by, because you don't always want to be using Aragorn's might to move every turn. But, um, you know, he can fill the role where he is at the back, not necessarily having to be up with the army, but like I say, yeah. you sometimes need to use his might with the list. Any more thoughts from anyone before we move on? No? no. Okay. Let's move on then. I thought we would end it with a fun one, um, which is oh, a fully oh, great. a fully mounted Mordor list <laughs> um, and not <laughs> our standard cavalry. So we have the Witch King on Fell Beast with the Crown of Morgul. He has three might, 16 will, and three fate. Uh, who is needing five wild riders with a shield, no throwing spear. He's had to go, you know, really budget to fit all this in. So, uh, and five Morgul Knights. Then he has Kamal on Fell Beast, who I know Ben has a certain sweet spot for, I would probably say, for Kamal. Uh, leading five wild riders with shield, four Morgul Knights, and another Morgul Knight with a banner. 22 models, five might, two Fell Beasts, fully mounted Mordor. What are we Good make? fun. Here, here to this. Cool this. list. Taking this list, Chad. It's a pretty Chad list, right? Love it. Is is this the sort of thing we could uh, we might have seen Ed Ball taking in years gone by? No, <laughs> not enough ring rates. Not <laughs> enough. Then no, I was going to say with the disappointed. There's no Morgul Blade though. Surely, if you're putting a Witch King on a Fell Beast, that's like an essential piece of kit. James, you didn't do the you didn't do the action. Oh, sorry. 
You didn't More do more than bladed. That's bad. Um, yeah, two fell beasts. Box compels into all your cav. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Who's the fight? Six guy who gives the banner rolls. Um, the dark marshal. Dark marshal. Do we think dark marshal be better than Kamal in this list? Ben, uh, you have uh... thirty seconds to pit trust Kamal. Okay, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Uh, Kamal will have with the with this list. Kamal and the Witch King are going to have to do the heavy work with the killing. So Kamal's will uh, regeneration by causing wounds um, should help keep him on the board for longer. I think. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. No. I get and that. Fight just, six. I just think maybe. I think, oh no, he can oh. strike. Sorry. That was good. Oh, sure maybe yeah. he can give the uh, the re rolls for the jewels right for the uh, the cav. I, I suppose it's going to screen. You got you do have the normal night banner, yeah. No, I can just to screen the fell beasts, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, you could also then add all the throwing spears because you'd be able to drop the banner. Very. Mm -hmm. I agree with Vinny here because the problem is, Kamal and fell like I've used this a bit at the beginning, and Kamal's really good, but he's got three attacks, like the Dark Marshal. Yes, he can strike. The Dark Marshal is also basic fight six, so it doesn't need to spend the two points of will in the combat like Kamal does. And more importantly, the Fell Beast base is quite large, so it can actually buff quite a few of those troop models. So yeah. instead of being one attack, two attacks, or if you're on a charge, three attacks instead of two, it does make quite a big difference. The other thing is Kamal can up his attacks, but he can't do it when he's on a fell base because he takes the fell base attacks. Yeah. So Kamul on a horse would potentially have been a better shout. No. But then he does cool though, ben. ability. But this man wants a double fell <laughs> beast. He wanted a double fell beast though, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so take Kamul on a horse and then put the Dark Marshal on a fell base and just now have with four models. <laughs> now with the Morgan. And then yeah, and Morgan. no Morgul Knights. <laughs> <laughs> now the real play would have been to keep the Witch King and Kamul on a fell beast and ally in Lurts on a fell beast. Am I right, Vince? Uh, <laughs> hey. <One more. laughs> yeah. That's what the viewers really want to see. That's the one. That's Love the one. The fell beast. Love to see it. Okay. We are going to move on to start talking about some of our lists where we do have, first of all, uh, Jake Rawson's list. I mean, Adam's list um, <laughs> at 700 points. Sorry, it's fine. I've used Jake's list many a time. Uh, would you like to run through it for our listeners, Adam? Yep. It's flimsy but fun. Fountain of Tricks, but a backbone of paper. So we've got 44 models, uh, five different warbands. We'll start with the, the mainstay, which is Nazug, who's my leader, with the Orc Bow. He's the one who can uh, get basically a free point and white to shoot. Uh, he's got four Hunter Orcs, six Hunter Orcs with Bow, one Hunter Orc with Warhorn, which is really important. Going to that Courage 3 is huge, and a Fel Uh We've got Fimble. Again, he's got a Bow. He's the one who can, he can run through deep water with no problems. Oh. And we've got five Hunter Orcs, six Hunter Orcs with Orc Bow, one Fel Warg. Yasnig, he's the guy with Strike, and he's got a Lance. He's only fight four, but he has four Hunter Orcs, five Hunter Orcs with Orc Bow, and one Fel Warg. You'll notice that I've actually got exactly 50%, or I think it's just one model over 50% on the bows there, um, which rounds, so that's all good. So that's 17 bows in total, plus the two heroes. And then I've got Goblin Merc Captain with two Gob Mercenaries and a Good Bad Captain with Shield, my favourite hero who always seems to get assassinated, uh, two Warbats and a Gundabad Orc with Spear, Banner and Shield. So 44 models, 19 bows total, which sounds really good, but the only list that's out shooting is that one with the, uh, <laughs> uh, what is it, like five Orc bows or something. Um but yeah, it's it's a really solid list in combat. It like smashes, but it does get broken. But it has so many tricks. So yeah, that's the list. So this is literally the 600 point list that on our recent Grand Prix preview episode, we saw 11 or 10 Nazog leaders. Uh, and we looked at my list. Um, and Adam, you took that list as well, didn't you? Yeah, to the mm -hmm. yeah. Um At 600, which was literally this list minus... Uh, the 
Gundabad Captain, uh, the Gundabad Banner, and the two Warbats. So um, from 600 up to 700, you're essentially paying for uh, the Gundabad Captain, which is 50 points. Um, and two bats. Two bats. So that is what the 100 points is. So other than that, is yeah. literally the same list, the same amount of bows, but you get two bats and a captain. Yeah. So you have 13 natural might. For a list that already has a lot of might, 13 natural is really, really good. Obviously, you've got the two flyers as well. Everyone knows I love the good and bad war bats. Um, I think this is really good, but um, although this is Jake's list, he isn't actually that keen on it from when I've spoke to him in the past. He doesn't think it's that good at 700. That Well, the, the problem with this list is it the model count isn't actually that high considering you're all D4. Yeah. yeah. And like, if you were to take Serpent Horde, you'd get, like, 55, 60. Yeah. If you, like, hoarded it out. Um, yeah. it's... There were some Serpent Horde lists, sort of, yeah, around the low 50s. Mark. Well, but yeah, if you take Kings, then obviously it's going to be less, or Betrayer, yeah. it's going to be less. But yeah. um, if you take Chieftains, you can get it quite high. Like, <laughs> I really like this list, but... Um, I, I really want to use it. Like it's going to break, and it just depends if I can win the game before that matters or not yeah like you know getting the strength five d7 captain in there is is nice you know um he brings march if you do want to keep the merc captain off of the board so that's nice to have um and obviously the bat's really good for the whole ground you know you can get them to the middle straight away but yeah having spoken to jake before he just sort of thinks going up to 700 you get the bat to the captain which is nice but it's how yeah. much do they actually bring for the 100 points extra yeah um is you know also that list got completely found out of the gp didn't it because i think 11 people took it yeah 600 yeah and much better at 600 i think yeah i think yeah but 11 people took it at 600 and no one finished top eight yeah no one mm -hmm. i think the top finisher was me at ninth or tenth like it's not yeah. that high considering there are 11 people like you'd expect one of them to get top eight right yeah yeah so, um, yeah we'll see yeah uh any other thoughts from anyone yeah i mean a big strength of this list has been able to wrap and potentially with the water features and things like that it's going to be much harder yeah yeah i haven't thought of that yeah yeah a good okay. point for you james <laughs> with that said then we will move on to ben haslam's halls of thranduil and casa doom list would you like to run through it for the audio listeners for us? Uh, yeah, so it's 36 models, uh, 8 bows, 7 might. I've got Legless on a horse as the leader, 7 Mirkwood Elves with the Elven Made, made Glaive, 3 Mirkwood Elves with, Elves with the Elf Bow and Glaive, 2 Mirkwood Cav with Shield, and then allied to it is a Dwarf King, 4 Dwarf Warriors with Shield, 1 Standard Dwarf Warrior, 4 Dwarf Rangers with Dwarf Longbow, and then a King's Champion uh, with the two Heralds and 10 Iron Guard. <laughs> and it's a bit of an experiment. <laughs> um, 10 Iron Guard, that is, that is yeah. wild. The Iron oh, Guard yeah. are the best. <laughs> well, I mean, Sam might disagree, but the Iron Guard are definitely up there with the Vault Wardens as the best bit of Kaz of Doom. And then you chuck in no banner. Uh, yes, no, oh, that's not King's, King's Champion. Champion. King's yeah. Champion. So I've got a six-inch banner actually because the two can what happens. split. Um, and what happens when I don't five, five phalanx with the other made roll off, yeah. uh, and throw no. weapons at the front as well with the iron guards. So it's you essentially took in four dice, um, to win a fight. So yeah. in terms of shield, with ball, five, five, it's pretty yeah, hard, should be quite good. However, and there's strength there's four, the right? Features. Yes, two attack strength four, yes. I really like it, Ben. Um, it's very similar run. to what Rowan um, has been trying to do the last few sort of years, couple years with um, Loth, Kazadum and Loth. Similar. Yes, yeah, so I originally wrote it to try and get Kazadum and Loth, but I couldn't get the points to work with Galadriel, yeah. so I ended up going with Leggy for the seven hundred. Yeah. Um, but my initial one was to try and put Galadriel with it. I mean, elves um, with a double banner is pretty naughty. Mm. Uh, pretty and the Mirkwood Cav, I think, get to re-roll swim tests. I might have checked that rule. <laughs> um, Who do, sorry? I'll get my get expert riders get a 
redo yeah. stuff. Yeah, oh, sorry, the pad. Oh, yes. Yeah. They've got a special rule, which I haven't checked out yeah, properly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Have you uh, had a practice game with this? Nope. Ahead of the event? Okay. <laughs> nope. If you had I don't do practice games. <laughs> yeah, I went. <laughs> oh, um, nice. Yeah. Um, no, I really like this because um, I I can't remember if I said on the pod, but I've definitely spoken to Sam about it, is that um because I've wanted to kind of run Kazadu for quite a while, but with more of the um elites that aren't the Vault Wardens, so the Iron Guard and the Half Guard. Um, and I just think they're really cool profiles. So yeah, seeing. 10 of the iron guard i guess you'd usually want to maybe use them in like a wrapping sort of fashion but i guess they're not no like... they're they're gonna be in this hopefully okay. where yeah. yeah although they have the two attacks it's like they're decent they're in the they're in the center of my battle line the banners yeah and the elves behind and, the fight and then fight. the dwarf warriors can flank and support to prevent yeah. wraps yeah yeah they can sit there at d7 and screen off yeah and fight for yeah so and you've got leggy. I'm rooting for you, Ben. Uh, Maybe the water. Three, five, six heroes. Yeah, always. Yeah. Um, Potentially yeah. the water features. Water features could screw you with some eyes and stuff. But I reckon that the masters potentially this would be really good. <laughs> yeah, it's all about because I mean you could, you know, get four out of the six boards where you've only got one piece of water terrain on there. You know, you might get fairly lucky in that respect, and then you're maybe playing scenarios that, you know, um, don't hinder too much on movement and things. So it all sort of depends on the boards. I think obviously, when you turn up to a to a board, you know, to play a game, a lot of it can hinge on the board. But I think at this event, that's sort of amplified by a fair amount. Yeah, Leggy can also deal with the Shadow Lord quite well. Definitely can. Spare. Yeah. For sure, and what you've got eight bows. Yes, it was it was the bows I saw, which I think was pretty good as well. Seeing as yeah. sort of three of those are the normal elves plus leggy, he could be shooting three, so potential six elf bows plus the dwarves as well. How come you haven't maxed on the elf bows? Uh, the points. Oh, is it not essentially? I the core was I wanted the I wanted to play the king's champion, and then ten iron guard, and then I wanted enough elves to go behind, and then it just became. A, Matter of, I have to put the Dwarf King in for the Alliance to make it work, so which yeah. is quite a big tax, but yeah. he does bring a march. Yeah, and then it was just yeah. how many models can I fit? How much is that army? Is, is it? Is it two points to add one more a bow? Well, as in to get up to max bows with that amount of elves, you get one more. Yeah, bow. I'd have to put another. I think it's, I can only get I think one it's more two, elf in. Yeah, but um, so uh, you can get one more bow in. To go yeah. up to four, but they're two points each. So you've already dropped a shield off of a dwarf or yeah, maybe and... just changing yeah. an iron guard into a Khazard guard, because then you also get some bodyguard at the front, which is nice. Mm, maybe. I guess he's hinging on the two attacks, but what is the price with the iron guard compared to Khazard guard? Uh, the iron guard are fifteen. Oh, um, the Khazard guard are what? Third? Twelve? Thirteen? Eleven, I think. I think they're eleven. Yeah. But they Where drop an want... attack and a thrown weapon. Because right. obviously I've got ten thrown weapons as well. Every time we're you do get these seven though, and bodyguard. Mm, maybe one or two. It would save. Maybe give you some. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah, one or two. You get another bow. Uh, ben wanted ten iron guard though. Yeah, I do mm. like it. I like it. Yeah, that. that's that's what I do. I drop a couple <laughs> of them. Dro- drop that dwarf warrior and go up to five two, bows in the ten. other warband. Yeah, you. Oh, you could also go up to five dwarf bows as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pew pew. Yeah, I can maybe get more bows in there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I like the 36 models with the, you know, considering some of the other lists that we've seen. Yes, they've got some big scary monsters and things, but they've got really weak troops in comparison to your. Yeah, this will carve through them. 36 models, fight five, you know. This is a list it's okay. That you it's okay need... with a watcher. Yeah, you don't need your heroes in combat to. Win. No. You just move up and yeah, leggy's pinging right. them. Yeah, yeah. I really like it. I like it when I saw it. Um. Okay. Moving on. Finally, of our list that we are going to be looking at, we have Vince and James here. Oh. The same slide <laughs> as we do have some very similar lists here. So, would you guys like to run through them, or should I just point out some of the differences? I say they're fairly different, to be honest. Like they've got. 
two yeah. things. So should I just part. point out some of the differences? Should I run through? Um, no, run through. Okay. Um, well, Vince, then, would you like to run through your list for us, please? Sorry, what? <laughs> no, no, sorry, I was, too, I was too busy playing the uh, the voice clip that no one like noticed. <laughs> I didn't know. We didn't. Wait, you didn't hear it? That's that. No, no, it didn't go through. But oh, uh, what? No, sorry, mate. You missed your moment. Uh, it, it was it was the uh, yeah the Elrond's classic scream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, we missed that, mate. Um, but yes, your list for us, my guy. Uh, so Thanks. I've got a Sildur with. A horse and shield. I've got nine warriors of Numenor with spear shield, five with bow spear, and one with spear shield banner. And then I've got a hive captain with horse on shield, five elves with shield, three with spear shield, two with bow spear, and two knights with shield, and Kirdan with four, uh, four elves with shield and two with bow and spear. Yep, so yours is 36 models, I believe. Yeah. 36 models, yes. And James, through your 32 model list for us. I do have 32 models, yes. Uh, so I also have a Silda as the leader. He's on his horse with shield in the ring. He's got five warriors with shield, three with spear shield, three with bow and spear, one with a banner, spear and a shield. I then also have a captain of Numenor on a horse with a lance, heavy armor and a shield. Uh, I then have in the Rivendell portion, which is led by Eris Thor, five warriors with shield, Three with spear shield, three with spear and bow, a Rivendell knight with shield, then Kirdan, two warriors with shield, and two with spear and bow. Hey, so Vince and James both running Lost Alliance. And I hate to say it, but I am soon going to be in this pool as well because I've finally been painting up my Numenor that I've had on my uh, on my backlog for like over two years now. So we're all going to be running it before long. Um, but yeah, initial kind of thoughts... Um, I do like the higher model count of Vince's list. I do like that. I think 36 is a really good place to be. But I do think as you get a bit more experience with the Last Alliance list, I think you drop the model count. And I think that's where you are, James. I think you've used it yeah. a lot. You drop the model count. Not, I know Jakob did at the yeah, I mean, recently in the GBHR, I've probably played it more than anyone else. Yeah, so. yeah. But I feel more like Jakob at <laughs> but the... This is actually a list I've taken from Casper, who's a Scottish guy. He took it to Preston, and it's. I thought it looked incredibly strong. I couldn't really see uh, any real weaknesses from it. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. And just, yeah, like Jakob at the finale ran it with the four heroes. I think anytime you see it with the four heroes, you're really in a low model count territory. But... Yeah. I think I mean, having the extra mic because I mean previously at Preston I ran it with a Lendil, so you get the free combat. Whereas I think having the captain when you have a Silda gives you so much more might to play with. As yeah, it allows me to have a second striker as well as March, which is really nice. And and a sealed door is just a single I mean, drop as well. Is as a leader, like yes, he doesn't have the fortified spirit. Yeah, the single drop is really, really nice. Yes, he doesn't have the fortified spirit, but he's got resistance to magic and too well. But as soon as you put that ring on, I mean I do remember some horror stories from events that you've been to where you just roll terribly, um, you know, with the roll for the ring. But yeah, you get it on and you don't roll that badly. I mean, he's pretty hard to kill. Yes, yes. Very he's, challenging. He's, he's, yeah. he's almost impossible to kill. I mean, especially like, for example, in my list, I'm not really going to be using his might for anything other than going in and doing that exact job. Yeah. So he's not exactly. really going to be failing consistently. No, because he'll have that in the reserves. And you've got the extra might from having yeah. it in. So, yes, you have the lower model count. Um, but, you know, I just think, yeah, with the experience, sort of, you can let... I think the fact there's probably going to be less space, potentially, to play in those gaps on the boards. You've got Kid and mm. you can limit what people can do with it. I think having a slightly lower model count in this event is probably slightly, like, more beneficial. Mm. I am generally... I do also really like the high elf captain. Like, I think to get the march in there is really, really good. But for 75 points to get a fully kitted out Captain Anuminor at fight five on horse with a lance, your D7. Resistant to magic. Resistant, Resistant to magic. as well, yeah. 75 points. That is such good value. It does yes, feel like a bargain. Yes, the fight six on the high elf captain is really, really nice. But 
How much is Vince the high off captain there with horse dancing? 95. 95. Yeah, 95. yeah. The, the captain of Numenor is definitely better value. So it's like, it's 20 points more. Yeah. And I just, I think like, it should be strength five as well. He's been robbed. Yeah. It but, should be. Uh, the um the role that you need that captain of Numenor to um fill can do that fine at fight five I think against yeah. groups. Jakob of the finale was running the captain on foot, just really cheap march. You know, two points of might um at d seven on foot is still really good for what fifty five points. Hundred percent. If we're sticking with a witch king Sully analogy, which everyone knows I love here. I don't want to be seeing a Numenorean captain with a lance charging into my black oh. guns because no. one, James might resist the transfix, which then means, uh-oh, now I've yeah. got to... The G- resistant on a small hero is just really annoying for people to deal hero. with. Strength six, effectively on the charge. Fight five, D7, you're not wounding him. He's a... Uh, he will be... <laughs> if we ever do a captain's tier list, let us know. <laughs> oh, if only. <laughs> captain's tier list. He'd be up there as one of the best captains. So, yeah, solid, solid. <laughs> so, just in defence of my list, I, th- I just think that you don't need that much might. Usually, with Kirdan and the War of Dismay, I just don't feel like I like calling moves. I like just waiting to counter. The might is kind of, is nice, but you bring the captain of Numenor more for like the hitting power, you said. But like, how often you... for March, considering we've got the hold ground, we have to be there. Yeah, yeah. But once he loses the horse, which can happen, he can fluff and hundred percent. Yeah. You got blind and light. Like yeah. So you should at least get that initial charge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying your list is worse. I'm just saying it's a bit different. I, mean, I actually like, think 100%. I was going to say I would be torn if I was writing a list similar to yours, Vince, between the captain and Aristor. Yeah. The strike is good, but a mounted hero with a lance at fight six is also really good. Oh, it's, um, it's just the so, march, really. If he didn't have march, yeah. I'd be taking Aristor. I do um, think Aristor. I mean, so recently, shout out to the Any Heroics podcast. I was listening to the first little bit of their pod where um they were talking about Aristor versus yeah. uh the high elf captain and yeah, then B is heavily in the captain section. Yeah, he um, and obviously the captain is five points less than Aristor on foot if we're talking about that, and you get the march. But Aristor brings you an extra point of will and fate. He's got the terror, the crack daggers. And he's yeah, no, really good. so I uh, yeah I am kind of firm in the Aristotle camp, but yeah, you need him for the march. But yeah, the thirty six models is really really strong for Vince's list. Hundred um, percent. I would say the we've got two knights in there. So that thirty six is very nice. Right? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Vinny's yeah. also in the Aristotle camp, even though he's taken high off captain. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. Because it's because we got the the whole if you listen to yeah. the any heroics podcast. You'll find out that Vinny came second. At a tournament the other day. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh. Shout Ooh. out. Um, I would say the final difference is probably just that James has Warriors and Umnor with Shield, where Vince doesn't. Yeah. I found running this list. Got... Honestly, yeah, yeah. it doesn't make much of a difference. Yeah, you like yeah, having yeah. some flexibility there at the front. and Yeah. But... I find that I've actually got too many spears. Yeah, but... that's what I found. Because I've, well, I've run it previously, just like you want to get as many spears as possible. Yeah, but actually, it's everywhere. it's nicer just to squeeze an extra model out or an extra knight. Yeah, because you really don't need that many spears. Yeah, yeah. I'd actually be taking more models if I could, but I can't. Yeah, yeah. thirty-six models is really scary. Seven yeah, hours. yeah. No, the the, the high model it's count, really good model count. Like, uh, yeah, my Witch King study list gets forty models. So, and then I've got to fight your guys with the. Higher fight and the strength four from the Numenor. So, yeah, it's it's a really good battle line. Um, I actually don't think either of them are like, oh, James is better, or Vince is better. I no, no, they've just got different things covered. It's, they've yeah, just it's got like different things. They've, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is really interesting. Like they've both got different things covered and will perform better depending on scenario and matchup. Either yeah. of them could, you know, be the better list at the tournament, um, which is great. So, yeah, good job. Yeah, nice. Okay, I think on that note, we are going to move on to our tier list.
where um so we're not talking... i mean we're skipping the witch king sully nonsense we are so we're not talking about every you know we've We've covered Sam's Kaz of Doom and Jay's Isengard and the Witch. Let Band. me, let me, let me just. I'm tell surprised we did. I suppose we did Sam's in the last one. That's what I'm. Well, yeah, I thought about that, and obviously we've. So about we'll, I'll just tell the viewers uh, quickly. So uh, Sam and I are both taking almost identical lists to what we took to Preston. I think Sam moved so, one model to a different warband. Sam moved a Dwarf Ranger, and I removed a shield off a of random with a spear. So yeah, go Jay. check out any of our other videos. Jay's is the, the same as well. You'll be able to see. Yeah, Jay, I was just about to say, is taking the same. Yeah, Isengard list. Comes so. back to my so, thesis of just practicing with the list until it works. It's just we've, you know, said before about how we've talked yeah. about some of our. I'm intrigued list. that Jay hasn't been more convinced by the bomb that Jake took because it does seem to perform yeah. better. A, a spell, a spell as well when we know we're having a Maelstrom scenario. Yeah. yeah. I, I do have a question about Jay, Jay's list. Um, does he never play Blinding Light? <laughs> he does, but I think he's just got so much shooting you can just get through it. Because with the double blister, like... Is he bringing the blister this time? I going to say, if he gets that yeah. sick hit on Galadja, put punches the Blinding Light away. Yeah, exactly. So then Wait, he his... can then shoot with his crossbows. He's got so... two He's got two blisters in this 700 point yeah, list? So... Two blisters, yep. like 15 crossbows. So... He's trying to outshoot blindly light then, like, and then hope, hoping to get lucky. Is that is that what he does? I'm just, it's yeah. a genuine question. I, I don't know. I don't I know think so. Do. He destroys armies on the way in and then mops up with a really good yeah. unit. <laughs> with a really good just with whatever's count. left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Power model count. Um, okay. But starting off with the tier list. Now, anyone who's um, watching from North Macedonia, I am sorry. I just didn't really know what to have for the bottom <laughs> category and we've used <laughs> who has been a failure in the in the news recently oh the uh the kate middleton photoshop that should have been oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah that's a good that one should have been i should maybe i'll start asking in the chat for suggestions for comment below who should be next week for next episode yeah let us know. Okay, starting off, we have the Watcher list, which was the Shadow Lord and the Watcher, 38 models, uh, with the naked captain and I think it was Durbers as well. Oh god, it's how okay. it's probably gonna just be in the nervous category, I think. I think it's on the lower end of the nervous category, to be honest. Adam J, uh J, Adam Ben. Yeah. I, th I think somewhere in nervous because I think at the end of the tournament it's probably gonna be somewhere around the middle. Yeah, yeah nervous. I think it's nervous. It's the it's just not quite high enough model count for what it is. Is this the one with all the black Numenorians? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How many models was it? Like thirty eight. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Yeah. Bang on. It's okay. Like it's still got a D six front line with Terra. It's got yeah. a way to deal with big heroes. Like I don't terrible. think it's the bottom end of nervous. Yeah, I think it's top end. It probably isn't silly nervous well, for me. One power power. Mind, it had no banner as well. Yeah. No banner. Top, top and nervous. Yeah, one. yeah. I think I think top and nervous. One prowler would put it into silly nervous. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Third. Maybe if you had a prowler, it would be. <laughs> it would be in silly. That's a good take from you, there, Vince. Okay. Um, <laughs> moving on, we have the Shadow Lord and Spider Queen list. This is silly nervous. This was strong. Silly nervous. Yeah. This is silly nervous. Uh, this yeah. was the one with the Moranans and yeah, we're at, yes. And the banner and everything. Yeah, this is uh, this I, is a well written list. I think it took all the weaknesses from the other one and just improved them. Yes, you don't have the watcher, but you've still got Spider Queen and the blinding light and everything. Same model count and the rest of the army is just better overall. Yeah, definitely in the silly nervous. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on, we have the Watcher and Spider Queen. I just thought it'd be fun to obviously talk about the Watcher and the Spider Queen and then have something with them both. But when it ends up. Yeah, but now we're going to have to rank this in a competitive list. <laughs> Which I, I think is it. Woof, woof. I think this yeah. is dog. Yeah, this, this just gets mashed, I think, by a lot of the shooting lists. They've got three for dog, Ben, Adam. I think it's a, a fairly good list. 
I think um, it's not that bad. It's got it's got double threat, hasn't it? Um, it is it probably down a... there, but mm, it's <laughs> a bit higher. It's whether it's dog like no, no it's higher, I think. I so, thought this was bottom of nervous, but then I was sold by James's woof woof. Yeah, he did do that. He did a good woof. Well, that does mean there's four for dog, so it looks mm-hmm. like it's the same dog, but. Yeah, Ben and I would put it in nervous. Okay, anyway. I was going to say, it's, best, it's better than the other list with the Watcher and the 13 Black Nums, I think. Really? Ooh. Yeah, I'd prefer to play the Black Nums list than... I mean, in a particular scenario... Than scenario, the Spider Queen. Because you've got, Spider Queen, about, you, you've got to do the scenario, haven't you? And the Watcher yeah. and the Spider Queen performs very well for the scenario. Hard to deal with. Uh, double bat with Shrider Shadows as well. There's a lot to think about. Yeah. I would say it, it can do well. In certain you scenarios, you do love Shadow Shadows, don't you? Ali? <laughs> it why, we, I thought we determined earlier that you could only use Shroud of Shadows on the spiders. spiders. So, why does it matter if he's got bats? <laughs> yeah. I'm saying that he's got double bat. You guys are saying only how having two bats is really good, <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't correlate it is, but it didn't, with Shroud of Shadows. Well, bat, did I? It didn't work in conjunction with the Shroud of Shadows. <laughs> the two phrases didn't. <laughs> they literally they were like both the same poles of a magnet they just went oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, I do like your argument Ben yeah they, I think yeah, say, the, if, the if you're fighting magnet. the watcher you want to keep heroes at the back so let's say you keep heroes at the back the person who has the watcher loses priority they can shroud the shadows the spider queen is going to assassinate that hero Win a move. through your lines yeah. because they're out of the way but the rest there's nothing to support them yeah, like, it, it has a lot to it. Yeah, there's a lot to think about for mm. that opponent. It's got a lot of punch and a lot of move, move maneuverability. Yeah, so it's not dog. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think it's dog. It's in. It's in nervous somewhere. I think. Has anyone else been swayed? No. 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 <laughs> Adam. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great compelling speech, Ben. But no. No, I'll stay with my opinion. I think it's bottom of nervous. Yeah. God, do you know what, Ben? Just put it in nervous. Put that it was in such nervous. an excellent yeah. defence. I'm going to change my vote. Put that list in there. God. No, no, yeah, no. After, after, after that. that. Oh, I literally just said, has anyone changed their opinion? And you all said no. And now you're all going, oh, yeah, <laughs> nervous. <laughs> what? No, you're right. It has changed my opinion. It goes in North Macedonia. <laughs> <laughs> Get it down there. Right. It's in nervous. Okay, moving on. We have the Return of the King, Legendary Legion. List. This this is dog. This is not. I thought, I thought this was better than both of the two lists we just talked yeah, about. So even at the best possible <laughs> no. kind of event for Return of the King and using ghosts, it still ends up in dog. Twenty four models is just not the yeah, one. Got you free, Mike. Terror, You've got the good heroes. You got the eight terror. Yeah, your high courage. And you're moving. Over you only have to kill twelve of them. Yeah, people yeah. used you to, to kill twelve of them to break. Well, thirteen of them to break them. Sure. And they've got 11 models left on the table, so you can pretty much dictate. Can to... you kill 13 of them? Yeah, that's it. If you're, you're a army, you're, you're Numenorean not... captain. And yeah, sure, I'm them. doing it. But... I'm having a Vince's <laughs> thing. Any hero mounted that has a lance and is higher than point three, any mounted hero is going to chomp through these boys. I think in, any mounted hero other than a hobbit is higher than point three. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> it's kind of like. Return of the King, I don't know why, but apparently when it first came out, everyone took it and it was really oppressive, but I can't see how. Um, so I think magic just it definitely can be good, just have Aragorn a load of bodies, easy. but these lists aren't built in that way. Now, Vince, would you say that Aragorn just gets bukkakied by magic? Yeah, I would say that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback to the Battle of Newbury preview episode. Sheesh. Uh, so where is it ending up? In dog? dog. Is it a dog list? I think because I think of so. the scenarios, uh, because of the terrain, I think it's higher than that. Be- because of nervous? old ground, it goes down again. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say it's dog. Then so, you need another rousing speech. Uh, well, depends what way. I'm probably going to bottom right? of nervous because it uh, because of the terrain, as Adam said. Yeah, I think it makes a decent difference. Mm. On uh, on the other end of the spectrum, you know, it could play on boards with <laughs> a load of deep water. 
and then it's really able to hinge on that in almost every game, maybe, you know? Yeah. It's pretty resilient against most shooting as well, being D8. True. I'm just spending like AOL, well, then you just having a bad day. We're I just in think it doesn't, it doesn't really do anything. Like, okay, your ghosts get across the water, they're still fight three, they're still not probably winning any fights. Yeah. If it's against those goblins, though, they are churning through quick. Yeah, okay, if it's against the goblins. If You're it's against anything, threes. If it's against anything lower than fight three, it's going to have a really good time, but that's, yeah. not, <laughs> that's not really... <laughs> Um, two of the two of the three lists we've looked at. If you give it, a fair amount of, there is a fair amount of Mordor and Moria that come, go into the tournament, though. Yeah. True. No. What's it going to do when it comes up against Courage Five Black Numenorians, though? Huh? Into Courage Four six, because of the Harbor. Well, <laughs> Courage Four, oh. which still makes it wounding on fives. <laughs> <laughs> um. um what I just don't think it's got nervous. enough moves. We're going to leave it at the bottom of nervous. Moving on, we have the fully mounted... Oh, we are being generous today. Uh, very. Well, fully mounted Mordor. Where's Dog. Oh, this is Lemon. <laughs> <laughs> James Goble. Lemon. <laughs> Which I love this list. Come on. This person is going to enjoy their tournament. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, having a great time. It's going to be a Lemon. I guess I'll watch her every game. <laughs> <laughs> Getting slapped up on a fell beast. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't go well, would it? <laughs> um, okay, let's leave it in lemon. Moving on, we have Adam's list. <laughs> we, nah, we're not keeping it in lemon. <laughs> this is a competitive podcast. Are we ranking this seriously? Okay, where's no, it going? going in dog. It's going in dog. It's going in dog with the other lists that you have. It does actually put. still have enough maneuverability and killing power to not be in North Macedonia. <laughs> <laughs> Are we actually going to put his list in North Macedonia? No, it's dog. It's dog. It's dog. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Adam's Hunter Orc and um, Azog's Legion Alliance list. I think this is worse than the Spider Queen Shadow Lord list, but still up in silly nervous. In silly nervous, I think. Yeah. Everyone in agreement on that, I think, probably. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed I'm the only person taking Azog's Legion or Azog's Hunters. I think because. People were scared of shooting, right? And you're either a really yeah. big brain or you've got a tiny brain. So my <laughs> thinking was, um, if people are going to take Watcher and if people are going to take Blinding Light, then I'm just going to play into that. Or Heroes, then the Watcher's not really doing anything because I'm going to keep those Heroes back. But surely you against just Blinding them, Light, really I mean, my shooting's not that great anyway, so... It doesn't matter. Flashback. The whole ground, though. Sunday night when your entire army gets shot off the board. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if they're shooting me, I'll be in position. So, when you uh, instantly bring on your mercenaries and start claiming those points in whole ground, though, you'll be a happy bunny. Yeah, true. yeah, it'll be good at whole ground. Yeah, Very true. Uh, and that's when you fail your coach test, and the guy's like, "No, you're not coming on." Adam can just put his terrain piece right in the middle. That'd be lovely. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's going at the bottom of the nervous. It is. Okay, moving on. We have Ben's um, Halls of Thunder and Kazadoom Alliance. I think this is about on par with that Spider Queen list. Like, yeah, this is, yeah. This is a good strong. list. This is a good list. This is a very good list. It's I think we're going to gonna see a lot of dwarf elf cheese, I think, this year. I think you're right. I would say just because of the water. It's below Adam's list. I think but, it's above right, Adam. Adam's got a lot more movement. I think it's above mine because it just, it just turns through and Legolas just shoots. Yeah, agreed with Adam. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I agree, Adam. <laughs> I agree. No, I think the deep water does hinder it. I say the deep water hinders it. I don't know it, if it does. I mean, so, it's way better at just holding a choke. It's got three, but, four yeah. attack line. Yeah, but depending on the board in some scenario, if he, if, if if he gets some busy boards on. with the dwarves, considering they also have the... um, Did the Iron Guard, is it just normal dwarf armor? Oh, well, it's minus one regardless, yeah, but they're... No uh, shields. No shields. Whoop, so whoop. That's whoop, whoop, swimming dwarves. So it's only minus one, so really they're not... Okay, but obviously if they roll a two to a five, then they're moving, yeah, two and a half inches. I'm very good at rolling twos. Yeah. You're not going to be mo moving very far. Then. you got legless then. <laughs> Just down. <laughs> uh, so it seems like people want to put 
his list above Adams generally. Yeah, I think yeah, it's I think, I think it's in between, yeah, there. Yeah. Mm. I think it's below Adams, but never mind. Okay. Little preview to my current pate scheme, my Warriors and Numenor. Come on, last line. Come on. That is original. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gave him grey cloaks, okay? I gave him grey. Let me cut. That's pretty standard. <laughs> so you call like um, me, you go purple. You go white. Yeah, white and purple. <laughs> um, moving on, we have Vince and James's list. We may as well talk about these together as we discussed them together earlier. So um Yeah. They're them? they're both gonna go in silly nervous. Yeah. Oh, probably below Adam's list, I think. I think above Adam's. Yeah. They've got they've got yeah. more tools. Um they they they're good for chokes, but also they can take the long way around a big piece of water with the blinding light. So if we're they've thinking got... shooting is gonna be the play. Yeah. Yeah. It's got blinding light. Point. It's got war of command. It's got fight five. I think I'm not um my argument say... isn't fervent. I'm I'm being swayed already. Sorry, Adam. I'd maybe put them above. I've got then. bats, though. That is manoeuvrable. No, I mean, a sealed or is manoeuvrable. <laughs> is, is actually a sealed is actually incredible. That's what I'm saying. I think I would maybe put them above Ben. If if, if you're not playing against Braves, you can't actually stop him. So I mean, like, yes, Ben has the dwarves there, but I mean, yes, they don't have the two attacks, but they've still got the strength four in there. You know, they've got a sealed or sure Ben's got leggy. Um... I win Elven Blade. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> got the double else. banner, which is nice. The double banner is nice. Um, but, you know, they've got... Leggy should do with Kurdan, though. They've got Kurdan and everything that... Yeah, in in that matchup, but I just guess mm. across, you know, you've still got Kurdan in. I think they're about the same. Yeah, yeah, there's really not much in it. There's not much in it. Can we maybe put one on either side? Well, I'll get double teamed by uh, the sandwich, <laughs> Ben. You're, you're in a little lost line sandwich. <laughs> yeah, just you're in a lost line sandwich. Nice and cozy just... in there. And we'll put we'll put Vince at the top as he uh, he got his second place the other week with the list. So that feels that feels... I think my last two events were my highest scores ever. So if he did, yeah. he did you, James? You know, Vince is. Vince got over the hump and he got it done. Yeah. I would say that Vince's Vince's higher model count probably serves him slightly better in that I think it's more consistent with the higher model count. But so I'm happy that it goes above yours, James. Yeah. I do definitely think I'm gonna be I'm, I'm a criminal. using the captain I'm, I'm of the Numenor. Just the five five seventy five points. When I looked at that, I was like, what the hell? So I'll be using Harry Parkill's pieces. I was like, what the hell? Make you conversion for sure. Yeah. Uh but we're happy with this. I'd like to Absolutely. know who's written a better list than all of us. That'd be interesting to find yeah. out. <laughs> Who will it be? Yeah. Sam Graham. <laughs> no, there's in the uh, person who's above us in silly and nervous. Yeah, yeah. The uh <laughs> queen. Yeah. We will find out, I'm sure. Um, okay, but that is going to do it. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching another episode of the Golden Games podcast.